Hey guys, this is Dizzy PW reporting in again. I am back from PAX. I'm a little bit more well rested. I'm very much coffeeed up, and I apologize for my previous videos where I sound like I was half asleep because technically I was. And I have got a couple more gameplay videos to show you. Got a lot of footage recorded at the show that we're going to be showing off, and the next up in our line is Mirage. Now, if you're looking at Mirage and you say this looks a little bit familiar, you might remember these developers from a little game known as Chivalry, which was one of the forefront like leading pack games of the whole shooter arena turned into more like melee fighting and medieval times games that we're just seeing pop up left and right nowadays. These guys they know a thing or two about how to make this work and they're taking another stab at it with Mirage which is more like the melee and magical version of the team arena fighter. So right here in Mirage you're going to be going into 5v5 matchups like I said, it's a lot like a shooter arena game, just with different mechanics. So the main gameplay modes they had on display, they had the hold the point modes, and they had the push attack defend mode, like you'd see in most shooters. It's 5v5, your classes are all sort of uh, Middle Eastern, like ancient Arabia themed. Let me do a rundown real quick of what you can expect to uh, get your hands on in this game. So there's the torrent, which is your typical bruiser. They run around with a giant two-handed mace. Their attacks are slow, but they're actually pretty quick on their feet. And a lot of times I found myself dead with these guys just because I made the false assumption that they were on a cooldown and I could strike. Not so much. These are dangerous characters that you mostly want to deal with at range or through traps or just through using the environment against them. Next up, there's the Alchemancer. This is a teleportation mage. They've got a lot of... Um, a lot of damage. They'll melt faces relatively quickly. I didn't get to see a lot of their abilities, but I think I saw one levitating at one point. And this is your priority number one target in any matchup if you can reach them. Next up, there's the Viperus. This is your assassin character. They've got kind of like a rift melding teleportation skill that they can use to not only get up in your face, but dodge incoming attacks because they're invulnerable for the duration of it. And this character, they're, they're a little bit tankier than you might expect for an assassin. You can hold it down pretty well in melee range if you block appropriately. And they dish out a good amount of damage. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this one. I like the state that it's in. Next up, let's see on the list, we've got the Vigilist. The Vigilist is more of your traditional tank. They carry a big pole arm and a whole body shield. They can take a huge beating. A lot of their skills are, are relegated to just knocking the foes around, knocking them off of places, or just knocking them flat down on their ass because there's nothing worse in this game than just being flat on your ass and getting stabbed a million times. And then finally, the last class we got to see in the demo was the Tinkerer. Now, the Tinkerer is a really unusual class. I'd say this has the most flair and flavor of any class on the roster. It's a trapper class. And at first I was like, how is a trapper class going to work in a game that's as fast paced as this? Well, they have one to two tricks to them. One is they can do kind of like a backflip kick flip and just jump off of things when they're in trouble. It's really useful for pushing you back and getting them out of danger. Secondly, they have a proximity mine that has a pretty wide AOE range. And with how hectic things go on in the fights here, if you throw one of those down, most people aren't going to be able to get away from it in time. If they do, however, the Tinkerer has a line of sight skill shot that can pull a target straight to them. So you can essentially pull one of your enemy or one of your opponents right onto the trap, blow them up, and hopefully catch some of their allies in the process. And this brings me to my next point of contention with this game, and this is something that I feel, especially in pug groups, if they don't edit this, is going to cause a lot of salt in Mirage. That, of course, is the fact that melee strikes in this game have friendly fire. Now, I get why they did it. If you're in a 1v3 situation without this, you would have no chance. You would be dead in a second. But if you can use the environment to your advantage and try to set up your opponents to get confused, through strafing, through teleports, and they start just swinging blindly in frustration, you can essentially use your opponents against each other to just let them kill each other. As the support tank, this happened to me a lot. With a bunch of new players on it, I was getting stabbed in the back all the time. I found I had to defend against my own teammates half of the time just to stay alive in a big uh, brawly arena fights. But as a, a, here's the difference. The abilities you cast are not the same. If you use an ability, you will not do friendly fire on your allies. So abilities make great use in those really in 
tight quarter brawl and fights. So I highly recommend figuring out your abilities and saving them for the killing blows, especially when your target's trying to run away. Now my thoughts on the actual mechanics of the game. The characters, they move pretty fast. The combat's really fluid. The jumping could use some work. I feel like it's maybe a little bit too realistic considering some of the designs their maps add for some really cool jump quest style possibilities to sneak up on your opponent but just with unless you burn your really long cooldown abilities you're not going to be able to really utilize all this cool terrain that they seem to be wanting you to utilize and on top of that you die really really fast in this game and you don't even have a real sense of your own health or your targets if you're attacking someone they they show a little bit of blood on them but that's about your only uh, clue and like everybody's bloody, so it's not really telling you very much that you already didn't know. Other than that, the maps are really large, and it kind of combines with a long cooldown timer to make a lot of time out of the action, which I wasn't a fan of. I understand they're doing it to add strategic value to your death. You really don't want to die in this game. But maybe they could do something else, like add some power progression into the mode so that you've got like a, some strength for killing somebody. But as it is right now, their current decision is to just make deaths really punishing, but you don't actually gain any power, which is good for come from behind victories because uh, you never really get weaker than your opponent. If suddenly your teammates click together, you figure out your formation, you figure out your strategy, and you just wail on the enemy team, you can come back from an insurmountable lead. That's kind of cool. So I guess from an esports standpoint or just from really competitive gamers especially those that play with teams mirage is going to have a really nice niche set up for them and the visuals are great the sound effects are awesome if not a little bit hilarious i really like the fact that you can do some really over the top taunts that your enemies can hear from quite some distance so there's a lot of mind games involved with this and i'm going to say it's a i'm going to wait and see on this one it looks like it has some potential it clearly needs a bit more polishing and also, I really want to see what they have in mind for the final unreleased character that I saw on the roster. They wouldn't tell me a damn thing about who this guy is, but he looks like Jafar with an oversized hat. So I'm hoping maybe they have some kind of genie magic in here. Maybe it's another ranged character because there's a lot, currently way too much melee going on. And it really makes, it really makes fights a bit of a clusterfuck as it is. So let's see this Jafar character go in and mix it up. I'm sure they're just work, is not working on some balancing issues because why wouldn't Jafar be uh, broken from the start? Um, that's all I got to say about Mirage. We'll have some more PAX videos coming up shortly. We'll have plenty more PAX videos coming out throughout the week. So stay tuned right here to MMO Huts. This is Dizzy PW signing out.